Hello, welcome to the Repair Specialist and in this video I would like to reach out to all of you who have come to start your lawnmower, chainsaw, strimmer, hedge cutter or some other type of garden machinery and have found that when you get it started and turn off the choke the engine just dies. Well if you've had this problem then watch this video because not only do I identify to you what's going on I explain why and how this is happening and some quick and simple solutions to get your machine up and running again without huge repair bills. So stay tuned, here goes. And so I'll begin by putting it all out here diagrammatically. We'll start with this fuel tank and then we'll put the fuel there inside the tank. We've got a fuel filter here and a pipe coming off the fuel filter which attaches to a carburetor and the carburetor attaches to the engine. And adjoining the carburetor to the engine is the inlet manifold here. Now this wouldn't normally be this shape I've done so like this, like a cone shape, because I've made the carburetor slightly bigger than it should be for this size of engine, so I can show what's going on inside the carburetor. And the model setup I've got here is a two-stroke system. Because with this particular system, it's a little more complex and there's far more to learn, especially with this particular topic of the engine only running on choke. And just to make things a lot more clearer shortly when I'm talking about the choke, we'll explain a few more key features here. And one key feature I will be talking about is the pulse line, and that is a small pipe attached from the engine to the carburettor. And coming out of the engine here is the exhaust port, and we'll see soon the exhaust gases coming up this tube and out. And back down here then on the carburettor, we've got the choke butterfly, and in this closed position, the choke's on, and in this open position, the choke is off. Another important feature is this little reed valve here, and it opens and closes like this, and we'll see why that happens very shortly. And the rest of the important components here I can explain as I'm going along. And firstly, I'll explain what's going on in this carburetor and engine under normal working engine circumstances, and then that will better help me explain what's going on when the engine will only run on choke. Okay, so now we'll start the engine. And as the crankshaft turns and the piston lowers, it creates a pressure in the crankcase beneath it. That pressure pushes the reed valve onto its seat and also pushes some pressure through the pulse line here to the carburetor. And that pressure forced out of the pulse line pushes down on this flexible part of the fuel pump diaphragm, forcing this down. When this is down, there's a valve over this side which closes and then there's a valve over this side which opens. And we'll see this a little clearer when we've got fuel in in a moment. And I'm sort of emphasising this diaphragm because as we'll see shortly, it can be a key player in an engine only running on choke. And so the piston continues to lower, keeping those pressures in the crankcase. And now as the piston rises, this is where we start to see things happen. I've fast forwarded a little bit on this. Normally we wouldn't get to this advancement with the fuel going all the way through the carburetor until the piston had raised up and down quite a few times until it has cycled but I wanted to get to the point a little quicker and now let's have a look what's going on now well because the pistons now rising it's creating a vacuum behind it pulling up and that's pulling in air here on this side of the carburetor and it wants to go into the carburetor but because the choke is closed only so much of that air can get through some can get through the small hole here or round the edge of this butterfly but a small amount can get through and now because of that a vacuum builds up inside here and because of that vacuum now building up and the piston still rising creating it it's drawing heavily on that jet so it's sucking fuel out of that jet quite heavily and because it's doing that there's more fuel in there than air ratio so we've got more fuel at the moment which is being drawn through there because of that vacuum opening up the reed valve here and then going into the crankcase there and because there's a vacuum under the piston again, that's felt through the pulse line and sucks that fuel pump diaphragm back up. And as it did so, it created a vacuum of its own and drew fuel out of the fuel tank, down through the fuel pipes, into the carburetor, through this one-way valve and then ended up underneath it. And the next time this diaphragm lowers, the fuel will be pushed this way. And we'll see that a little clearer in a moment. But as the fuel leaves the main jet here, it actually draws down on this diaphragm here. It creates a vacuum inside here, which is the metering area, and this diaphragm lowers into this position. It was in this position, but it's now pulled into this position. And in doing so, it pushes down on the back of the metering lever here, which pivots here and lifts up at the front, pulling back the metering needle. This is a fuel valve that's open to allow a constant supply of fuel to come through the carburetor and out through the main jet to supply the engine. And as the piston continues to rise, it keeps bringing in the air and fuel underneath it. And then we get to top dead centre, and then the piston starts to lower and compress all that air and fuel beneath it. 
and that forces the air and fuel up the transfer port but it can only go so far because at the moment the piston's blocking the path and the pressure's doing its usual of lowering the diaphragm and closing the reed valve and that lowering of the diaphragm forces the fuel that was underneath it through this one-way valve and ensures plenty of fuel down here in the metering area ready for the engine to use on its next cycle and at the moment the piston's blocking both the transfer and the exhaust port but that changes when the piston lowers and now it's done so that compression has forced all that air and fuel through the transfer port and onto the top of the piston and as the piston rises it compresses that air and fuel above there whilst drawing in more air and fuel underneath it so the piston continues to compress that air and fuel as it rises to the top then combustion occurs and that forces the piston back down and in the wake of all of this are the exhaust fumes in there which are flushed out through the exhaust port as the fresh fuel and air start to come in through the transfer port because it's being compressed down below. And remember we've just started this engine so we're still on choke and the engine will run for several cycles like this until it warms up enough to take off the choke. The engine's warm now so we can remove the choke and as soon as we do we can see we've got a higher influx of air and because there's less restriction there caused by the butterfly there's less vacuum build up inside of here and because we've got less vacuum built up there's less vacuum pulling out that fuel and so there's a double whammy effect here altering the ratio of fuel and air because we've got more air coming in meeting the fuel and the fact that we've got less vacuum there pulling out as much fuel we get a different ratio we get a higher air to fuel ratio but this time the mix is of a better mix to allow the engine to run now that it's warm even though the choke butterfly is now open there is some vacuum maintained inside here by the venturi by this restriction here this is enough to allow enough fuel for normal engine running to be drawn out of the jet there's a lot more to venturis and carburetors than what i'm mentioning but i have actually got other videos on youtube here that detail a little better so please do check them out if you need to okay i've spent the last several minutes now explaining how these engines run under normal conditions and how the choking system works and that's great because now i can explain better what happens now when the engine will only run on choke and i'll go through each particular point now and it will be easier to understand now we've gone through the foundation of it and so if we keep this particular image as if we're frozen in time i can explain things a little easier and i'll go through each point now in no particular order but what we find with an engine that will only run on choke is that it's an engine asking for more fuel so basically the problem is that we've got a fuel starvation issue that the engine's going through and it needs more fuel so first of all let's imagine our fuel filter is blocked with crud that means it's going to allow a substandard amount of fuel into the fuel pipe here down into the carburetor through the system and down the bottom here available for the jet so that means less fuel coming out of the jet and that ratio of air and fuel there changes so there's more air now than fuel and we haven't got enough fuel now to run the engine efficiently because remember the choke is off at the moment so less air enters the crankcase here which will eventually end up at the top of the piston here for combustion and so at this point the engine will start to bog down because we haven't got the fuel to keep it running efficiently and a usual reaction when we hear that bogged down sound is to reach down and apply the choke again this again restricts the airflow coming through the carburetor builds up the vacuum inside here and draws down harder on the jet here pulling more fuel out and it helps to maintain this flow to a degree because as the fuel's leaving the jet there it's creating a vacuum behind it inside the carburetor all the way up here and creating a situation where it's pulling through that fuel filter that bit harder to compensate for the blockage however if the fuel filter's too blocked of course we won't be able to get any fuel through so absolutely no engine running in that case and so there we are then my first reason for an engine only running on choke is fuel filter blocked and the only remedy for this is to replace the fuel filter regularly on a service because that's what they're designed to do i personally test these filters by removing them and cleaning them enough so that i can blow down them and if it's a lot of restriction down there as i blow down them then i realize it needs replacing but that's just what i do but i'm not necessarily suggesting that you should do that and so my next reason for an engine only running on choke is to do with the fuel tank and in this case the fuel filter is working just fine but as the engine continues to use fuel it continues to leave the fuel tank and as it does so over a period of time it creates a vacuum above there but thanks to a breathing mechanism usually found in the fuel tank cap when that vacuum builds up it draws in air from outside the fuel tank and neutralizes this vacuum and this vital influx of air allows the fuel to continuously leave the fuel tank and supply the carburetor to feed the engine so if this breather valve wasn't allowing air in let's say because it's blocked or damaged then we'd get that vacuum back 
inside the fuel tank there and that vacuum would stop the fuel from leaving the fuel tank and what we're left with here is fuel starvation once again similar to how it was when we couldn't get enough fuel out of the fuel filter because it was blocked now we've got less fuel going into the carburetor because it's not allowing the fuel out of the fuel tank and so in this situation where there's a total blockage of the breather the engine will just stop because no matter what we do we won't be able to get that fuel in there even if we put on the choke if, however, there's a partial blockage of this breather, allowing a small amount of air through, then a small vacuum will build up there. And in my personal experience, this vacuum is enough to let some fuel through, but it's causing a starvation for the engine. There isn't enough going through. So that's when we get a situation where the engine's not running efficiently. It's bogging down when the choke's off. Because again, the engine there is trying to combust a mixture with too much air and too little fuel, and that's not good for engine running. And so in this case, what do we do when we hear that bog down sound? Well, we turn the choke back on to see if it runs any better. And what happens, as we've seen before, we've got a vacuum building up inside here, which helps to draw harder on the jet there, pulling more fuel through and helping to compensate to allow more fuel to get up there to the engine and allow combustion to happen better. And that's why in this instance, this engine will only run on choke. Again, though, it's important to remember that this will only work this way if there is a partial blockage up here, allowing some air in, because as we've said before, if there's a total blockage, there'll be such a vacuum in there that it will stop the engine, will stop any fuel coming through whatsoever. And so if you do suspect it's this problem and you stop the engine or the engine stopped itself, we can do a little test at this point. If we make sure we're in a quiet place and slowly undo the fuel tank cap and listen, if we hear a hissing sound as we open it, that means there's air rushing into the fuel tank because that vacuum inside the tank is drawing it in and that instantly neutralizes it. Another thing I've done in the past is I've actually run the machine for a while with the fuel tank cap slightly loose just to see if I can make it run longer without reapplying the choke than I did do before when it was tight. And whilst using a machine with the fuel tank cap loose to test for a fault is one thing knowingly, actually using the machine day to day long term is another. And it's quite easy to forget that the fuel tank cap's loose and then we start leaking fuel and then it could catch on fire. And so in my opinion then, if you have narrowed it down to the fuel tank cap or the breather of the fuel tank being a problem, the only solution is to get a new breather or a new fuel tank cap. Okay, I think that's covered that. And moving on now to my next reason that an engine will only run on choke relates now to the fuel pipe itself. And again, I've got to compare the misfunction that's going on here to the engine actually running well. So we've got a normal supply of fuel going into the engine, let's imagine, and we've got a normal supply here coming out of the jet and a good air to fuel ratio. So we've got normal engine running with the choke open. I realise the engine probably wouldn't have been running well for a long period of time and then all of a sudden we'd need the choke. It does happen, but generally we start the engine from cold, turn off the choke, realise the engine's bogging down and put the choke back on. But I've got to start from somewhere, so I'm going to start from when the engine's running well. That way I can explain what's going on and why. And so fuel pipes then, being made of a rubbery plasticky type material, can sometimes get penetrated. They can sometimes degrade and they can leak fuel. And whilst that fuel's leaking, we can sometimes see, of course, but also it draws in air from that same point in some situations. Because what we've got here, we've got the fuel pump that's frantically pumping inside the carburetor there, creating a vacuum down, pulling that fuel into the carburetor. And as it pulls that fuel in, it also pulls in the air with it. From there on, it's also the fuel pump's job to ensure that the fuel is pumped throughout the carburetor and is made available down here for the main jet. But because the fuel pipe's damaged, it's also pumping air round, right round the carburetor. And so instead of there being a good supply of rich, neat fuel coming out of the main jet here in order to mix with the air inside the inlet, we've actually got a mix of air and fuel already, which is diluting the fuel even further. And so when that dilution actually gets into the inlet there, we've a lot more air than fuel, way too much for the engine to combust efficiently. And because of this, when the engine makes that bog down sound, we turn on the choke. And that instantly increases the vacuum inside here in the induction tube and helps to draw out more of that fuel. Now, the thing is here, though, is that because we've got fuel being drawn out with a greater vacuum there, so it's drawing harder on that fuel, that vacuum has felt all the way up the carburetor, right up the fuel pipe and in the fuel tank where that vacuum is pulling in, so it's trying to get more fuel. Now, we might say that because we've got a 
a fracture here or a hole here in the fuel pipe that it's drawing in more air as well as a result well that is true but i have found that when we've got problems like this in the fuel pipe here with these kind of brakes that turning on the choke does pull a little more fuel through and so that generally helps get more fuel up into the engine and helps engine running stops that bog down when I say engine running, I don't mean it will be running efficiently whatsoever. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is, when we apply the choke, the engine will run, although not with any particular quality. And of course, if we're having these kind of problems anyway, applying the choke when the engine's running isn't the answer. It's just telling us that there's something in there that's going wrong. And this is what I'm hoping these videos are doing, just explaining that. And so now then we'll move on and let's have a look now at what happens if we get a blockage. And of course, a fuel blockage can occur sort of anywhere around these areas in the fuel pipe here or anywhere around the carburetor like this. Anywhere that sediment can build up or any kind of large material can get past the fuel filter and into these areas, then we're going to eventually get some sort of blockage. So knowing that a blockage can occur in any of those areas, let's just say for argument's sake it's happened here. And we can see there that little piece of crud build up. And like in this case now, if it is a total blockage, then none of this fuel here will be able to come right down through the carburetor and up into this point here. Because at this point in which the blockage occurred, it's obviously stopped the flow coming through. So that's created a vacuum inside the carburetor here, stopping any fuel coming out of the main jet. And that means no fuel going into the engine. And in this situation, the engine's not going to run regardless of whether we use the choke or not. And I've shown these air arrows here to signify that even if we keep pulling the starter pull cord to try and get this engine going, of course, we just can't because we've got total blockage of fuel. But if up here we had a partial blockage, then things would be slightly different. Because, of course, in this case, there would be some fuel coming out of the main jet, but it wouldn't be in sufficient quantities. The air to fuel ratio there wouldn't favour the engine running well at all, and the engine would start to bog down, if run at all. Because what we're left with here is too much air to fuel ratio, and that would be the cause of the engine running problems. And so applying the choke would do two things. It would restrict some of that air coming through and also a vacuum pressure would build up inside the induction tube here and there would be a greater vacuum pull there on the main jet. And providing that that blockage there isn't blocked too much to stop that vacuum pull from pulling some fuel past it, then a little more fuel should come out of the jet there and sort of equalise things a little bit more on the air to fuel ratio. And so at this point, it might seem that the engine's running a little better, but of course it won't be running efficiently. And the only cure to this problem is to clean out the carburetor there and make sure everything's nice and easy for the fuel to go and flow through. And just to be clear, this kind of problem we've seen here can occur from blockages anywhere around the carburetor really. And that of course includes the fuel pipes. And so moving on to another scenario, let's imagine all's working well here. We've got the engine working well, the carburetor's working well, We've got the choke open, as it should be, and we've got fuel coming out of the carburetor OK at a good fuel to air ratio. And let's imagine that all's been running well this way for many months, even many seasons. And what can sometimes become an issue is the point where the carburetor joins on to the engine or the inlet manifold. So specifically that junction there, that point at which them two areas meet. Because rightfully, the carburetor should be securely fixed to the inlet manifold or the engine by two retaining bolts. And we can normally see these on this side of the carburetor. And although I haven't actually shown them here in this model, they actually protrude through the carburetor through special holes and fix the carburetor firmly to the engine. And what can sometimes happen here for several reasons is that these bolts can come loose. Now, I have come across this problem a few times in the past. And one reason is that these retaining bolts can work their way loose over a period of time, as I've said, through many seasons, etc. And another reason is that when a machine has been repaired, they perhaps haven't been tightened up enough when they've been put back together. Another reason is I've had brand new machines come from the factory and they haven't been actually tightened up at the factory right. So it's always best to just see if these retaining bolts here are tight enough for the engine to run correctly. That said, of course, we don't want to over tighten them and strip the threads. But in any case, as a result of these bolts not being tight enough, we've now got a slight gap between the carburetor and the inlet manifold. And as I've said, it only has to be very, very slight, even too small to see. But of course, for the purposes of this drawing here, and to get my point across, I've had to show it so we can see. And what happens when a gap like this appears here is that air is drawn through it into the inlet manifold. 
which is a result of the vacuum that exists inside the inlet manifold there as a result of the normal engine running, the normal upward movement of the piston. And this air that's coming in unnaturally in this area here changes the dynamics inside of here. Because all of this air rushing into this area here where it shouldn't be causes two problems. First of all, of course, there's too much air coming into this area upsetting the ratio of air to fuel. That means obviously the engine won't have the right amount of air and fuel there for combustion to occur. Secondly, because there's air coming in again from this point, we've got a reduction in there inside the induction tube there inside the carburetor of the overall vacuum which is needed to draw that fuel out of the main jet there. So as a result, we've got less fuel being drawn out the main jet because we've got less vacuum here. And so the double whammy here affecting the critical ratio of air to fuel is that there's too much air coming in and there's too little fuel being drawn out in order to allow that engine to run efficiently. And this is one of those points at which we'd experience the engine bogging down and a natural reaction would be to reach down and turn on the choke. And in doing so, we'd see the usual reduction of airflow and some increase in vacuum here in the inlet. And that increase in vacuum might be enough to draw some of that fuel out of the main jet there to try and equalize that air to fuel ratio and to try and make up for that loss in fuel, which can make it seem like the engine would sound a little better by bogging down a little less. But at the same time, applying that choke and increasing that vacuum inside of the Venturi area there means that there's going to be more vacuum to draw in on that gap there as well. So of course, the answer to this isn't just to apply the choke, of course, never is. It's always to get to the root of the problem. And so the best thing to do in this case is to physically feel the carburetor and see if you can shake it from one side to the other to see if it's physically loose and also check those bolts there, those retaining bolts. Just see and make sure that they're nice and tight, moderately tight that is, so that it's tight enough not to cause this problem, but not too tight in order to damage any threads. But something also to bear in mind here is that this problem can also occur even if those bolts are nice and tight. And that's because just at this point here, again where the carburetor meets the body of the engine or the inlet area of the engine, there should be a seal or a gasket. Now, if that seal or gasket is leaking or damaged, then you're gonna get this kind of problem regardless of how tight those retaining bolts are. So of course, the answer to this again is to replace those seals there or those gaskets. And in another scenario then, and another reason we may need to use the choke for anything other than the usual reasons for starting the engine is relating to the mixture screws sometimes known as the carb adjustment screws, the air screws or the fuel screws. I always relate to them as the mixture screws because it relates to how much fuel to air will be mixed inside the carburetor. And so like this, these screws are threaded and screwed through into the carb body. And some carburetors like this have two of these adjustments. Some have one, some actually have none. But as we can see, the screws there terminate inside a little fuel vein there and they actually protrude into that small vein. And these fuel veins actually allow some of this fuel here in the metering area through, and I'll bring that into a little closer. And so we can see there a little more clearly that this fuel down here in the metering area can travel through these little fuel veins like pipes in order to get to the inlet area there of the carburetor. And although the main jet here is responsible for the main source of fuel coming into the carburetor, these little fuel veins here are actually designed to contribute to the total amount of fuel going into the inlet there. And so the engine is designed to run effectively by receiving fuel from these two points. And so why is this the case then? Why is it designed this way? Well, let's remember that the fuel coming out of the main jet here is the main source of fuel for the main engine running, for general engine running that is. And the amount of fuel coming out of these fuel holes here is in a much smaller amount. And it's designed that way for fine engine tuning. So in order to get one of these engines running just so, the ratio of air to fuel inside the carburetor there has to be precise. So in a nutshell then, the bulk of the fuel is provided by the main jet here and the mixture screw fuel holes here provide a smaller amount for a precision ratio of air to fuel inside the carburetor. And in order for that to happen, the amount of fuel coming out of these little fuel holes here has to be adjustable. And that, of course, is where the fuel adjustment screws come in. If we take a look at just one of them here, as we said, the end of the screw that's screwed into the body actually keeps going and it protrudes out 
into the actual fuel vein there. So if we were to screw this adjuster screw in further so that it protrudes into the fuel vein further, we'd see that it'll start to choke off that fuel coming out. So there'd be less fuel coming out of that particular fuel vein. And of course, screwing the screw outwards would mean there'd be less restriction in there, allowing more fuel to be released. So both screws will operate in this way. I've shown a very basic model here of how these work. It's far more complicated than this in an actual carburetor, but I've had to show it in this way to get my point across. But one of the screws will be a H screw that will adjust the high revolution setting, and one will be a L screw, which will adjust the low revolution settings. And so bearing in mind that these screws have to be set at just the right place then for optimal engine running to allow that ratio inside the carb to be just right, then we can see that if these screws are screwed too far in, restricting too much of that fuel going into the carburetor, then we could see we'd get a problem here, a bog down problem. And this particular issue here of incorrectly set mixture screws is a very, very common thing and one I come across very, very often. And so if these screws were mistakenly turned in too far and causing that bogged down sound, then the first thing the operator would want to do is to reach down and turn on the choke. That's if they could get the engine started in the first place. But as we know, when we activate the choke, we decrease the amount of air coming into the carburetor and increase the vacuum there. But that vacuum's unlikely to draw any more fuel out of these little fuel holes here because of the way the screws are set in. So the actual vacuum affects the main jet. It actually draws more fuel out of the main jet as a result. And this is why applying the choke might seem like it's getting the engine running that little bit better if we've got mixture screw settings that are set too lean. But of course, as always, this is not the answer. The answer is to get that carburetor set up properly with those mixture screw settings. And so in a nutshell, that is of course how these mixture screw settings and the main jet work in sync with each other in order to run that engine efficiently. OK, so moving on then, and another reason that an engine might only run on choke might relate to the fuel pump diaphragm cap here or the metering diaphragm cap. But in either case, if any of these two caps are loose, then it can give similar symptoms. And looking at the fuel pump diaphragm cap here, we've got the retaining screw there. There's normally one retaining screw in the center. And we've got down below here, we've got the metering diaphragm cap. And normally we've got the retaining screws here. There's normally four of these and they're a little bit smaller. And as with the fuel pump diaphragm retaining screw, these retaining screws down here on the metering area actually hold this cap on and in place. And they keep it firmly attached to the carb body so that there's no leaks in between here where the actual cap meets the body itself. Between the two there, as well as there being the diaphragm, there's also a gasket, a seal. So there's no leakage there of fuel coming out or any air going in. And providing that these retaining bolts are tightened correctly, then there'll be no leaks past here. And that allows that fuel leaving the metering area here to go inside the inlet of the carburetor to build up that vital vacuum in order to pull this diaphragm upwards and pushes back on the metering lever, which pivots in the center there, pulling the front of that metering lever downwards, which pulls back the metering needle, opening the gap there, which allows a constant flow now of fuel to come through from the fuel pump area under a slight pressure and out into the inlet of the carburetor for normal engine running. And as we've said, that's all thanks to this fuel leaving this area here, creating that vacuum to pull up that diaphragm. And so now we can better appreciate how this gasket and diaphragm here create this seal between the cap and the carb body in order to keep that vital vacuum inside of there. And so if there was a gap here because the end cap was loose, of course, there'd no longer be a seal. Now, of course, it most probably wouldn't be a gap this size. It wouldn't need to be in order for it to affect its running. I'm just making it like this just to make a point here. But as a result of this gap, two things will happen. There will be some leakage here of fuel, of course, but mainly the problem here will occur when the fuel itself in here, the vacuum is drawing in air from the environment around the carburetor. And that air quickly starts to fill the metering area until there's so much air in there that there's no vacuum left in there at all. And of course, without that vacuum, the diaphragm can't be drawn upwards. And so it regresses down into this position. And now it's in this position, it's not depressing the metering lever. And so the metering lever pushes back downwards here because we've got the spring 
there that's pushing that lever that way because remember that vacuum was pulling the diaphragm up and the diaphragm was overcoming the pressure of that spring there allowing the metering lever to go up at the back but now now it's come back down of course the springs took over and because the metering lever has now come down at the back that means the front has now gone upwards and that's pushed the needle valve there back onto its seat and in doing so it's blocked off any fuel coming downwards into the metering area and that then means there's little or no fuel down here to come up the main jet and into the carburetor and that result of no fuel the engine stops and so now we can see and appreciate the sort of thing that goes on when these caps are leaking quite badly like this but what can sometimes happen is that these caps can just be only slightly loose and that causes a different problem because instead of having the possibility of noticeable fuel leaks and completely overriding the system here with a mass amount of air inside the metering area which more or less results in the stoppage of the machine what we can get is an intermediate between everything flowing well and the engine running perfectly and the absolute stoppage that we've just explained and what results is that the gap here between the cap and the carb is actually smaller because the cap is only slightly loose but it's small enough for some air to get through there but not to be able to see any noticeable fuel leaking from it so what happens is this lesser amount of air coming into the metering area there doesn't totally cancel out that vacuum inside there sending the diaphragm downwards instead the vacuum still exists in there but it's just reduced and so the result of that partial vacuum in there means that this diaphragm is only partially drawn upwards in comparison to where it was when everything was working fine and so the effect of all this is twofold first of all we've got air mixed in with the fuel here so when the jet draws out the fuel we've actually got air mixed in with it and that upsets the fuel air ratio there because we haven't got neat fuel coming out of the jet there and it's already mixed with air then of course we haven't got enough fuel to keep the engine running properly secondly because the back of the metering lever is only partially pushed upwards by a partially expanded diaphragm that means the front of the metering lever is only partially back and of course that means there's less gap there allowed by the metering needle and of course the less of the gap here the less of the amount of fuel allowed to flow into the metering area itself and that means less fuel available down here in order to be drawn up into the carburetor for the engine and so less fuel availability coupled with the fact that the fuel that's coming up is already mixed with air means that we've got a real fuel starvation issue inside the carburetor there but in this scenario the engine is still running but if we have a look at the effect of the reduced amount of fuel there because there's less fuel going into the engine the engine's slowing down and because the engine's slowing down there's less air being drawn into the carburetor itself and the reduced amount of air in there means that there's even less vacuum inside the metering area here because there's less pull out of the main jet so there's even less upward pull on that diaphragm and that of course affects the needle valve here which shuts off even further and so at this point then the engine's now bogging down and so at this point the operator might feel it's a good idea to turn on the choke and now we've done that that restricted airflow that was coming in is now restricted further so more vacuums building up inside the carburetor here and although that vacuum inside there slightly increased it's also slightly increased the vacuum down here enough in order to pull that diaphragm slightly upwards and although this vacuum may well draw in a little more air in here there is still enough there just to move that diaphragm and allow the needle valve now to move back a little bit and so that allows a slightly better flow of fuel out of the main jet and into the carburetor there which may well have relieved the symptoms there of bog down and made the engine seem like it's running a little better the problem is as always this isn't the answer we can see what the problem is we've got this cap loose down at the bottom which is allowing air in and that's what's causing all of this problem so the only remedy for that is to tighten the cap or replace the diaphragm or replace the gasket whatever's the problem there and just in a nutshell so i don't make it too extensive it's a similar situation with a fuel pump cap here if the retaining screw at the top of the cap here is slightly loose or if the seal between the cap and the carb body is degraded somehow then we're going to get air leakage into the carburetor in a similar sort of way and so that air is going to mix with the fuel at this point and be carried around by it and of course anywhere where we've got air in with the fuel means that we've got less vacuum and so this fuel pump here won't have the same efficiency as a pump because what's going to happen here because we've got air leaking into the system we've got no vacuum up the top here to allow the pulse line to draw out and then to push air back in so that the pump won't move up and down 
and so if it does operate at all it'll operate very poorly and so that poor flow of fuel and air are now coming down through the carburetor and when it gets down to the bottom here it gives the same sort of symptoms as we've already seen but the double whammy with this one is that we've already got a problem way before we get down here and so providing that this cap's only slightly loose so not too loose then it might seem that applying the choke will be a good idea but as we keep saying this isn't the rectification of the problem the problem is we need to either tighten the top of the cap or replace the gasket or seal and so the diaphragm itself can also give symptoms similar to what we've been seeing and that's because the fuel pump diaphragm up here obviously relies on that pumping action and that pumping action relies on that diaphragm being absolutely airtight and let's have a look why we can see there that each time the diaphragm rises it creates a vacuum and draws in fuel as a result of that vacuum underneath it and so as the fuel's drawn in then down the fuel pipe it opens this valve here because this valve opens downwards so it nicely lifts that valve off its seat and all of that fuel drawn in then just sits underneath that diaphragm and when the direction of pressure from the pulse line pushes in on top of the diaphragm as a result of the piston lowering then it pushes down on the diaphragm and that of course forces down on that fuel so that creates a pressure in the fuel and the fuel tries to go this way but because the downward flap was there it's actually pushed the flap back up onto its seat so the fuel can't go any further that way so it goes this way and when it does so it opens this valve flap up off its seat because this valve flap opens upwards and so it flows past and continues down the carburetor here past the needle valve and into the metering area where it's available for the jet to use inside the inlet of the carburetor for the engine and so when the pressure above the diaphragm changes then so when the pulse line creates a vacuum there because of the piston raising creating a vacuum through there and drawing that diaphragm upwards the process then repeats itself and then so on and so on and so you can now imagine that if there's any problems of this diaphragm any damage if it's not airtight and fluid tight then we're going to get some problems here because of course if there's any loss of pumping efficiency of this pump then we're not going to get the fuel down into the metering area available for the main jet for the engine so that's why it's vital that we have these diaphragms replaced with every service and sometimes they need replacing even in between services depending on the types of fuel we use and of course the quality of the diaphragm we're fitting in the first place that also makes a big difference it's always best to go and use a genuine product I always believe now if this diaphragm was 100% damage completely stopping its pumping efficiency then of course the engine wouldn't run because we wouldn't get any fuel in there but I'm talking about here if we've got sort of semi damage or slight damage in this case we would get fuel in here but it would be in a smaller amount so it would reduce that air to fuel ratio there'd be more air to fuel and so of course the engine would start to bog down and at this point again it might seem a natural reaction to apply the choke and that will increase that vacuum pressure inside here in the inlet and that will help to draw some more of that fuel out as much as it possibly can and of course this might just well keep the engine sort of ticking over if you like or running lumpy but it isn't going to run properly as we've said with all of these cases and so in this case now we know what to do we've got to replace this diaphragm here as I've said we always need to replace them if we can with every service if not sooner and so there are many more points I could make on this subject but the last point I want to make is regarding the metering diaphragm and the reason I want to make this the last point is because we could go on and on and make a video for hours and hours regarding this subject of why an engine will only run on choke so I wanted to put down the ones I've commonly come across in the past and so moving on to the last point then we know that when fuel is drawn out of the main jet here it increases the vacuum down here as the fuel leaves and that draws up this diaphragm that then pulls back the needle valve there off its seat allowing more fuel through down into the metering area here for the main jet to use for the engine and so if there was some slight damage to this diaphragm as I said with the fuel pump diaphragm if there's a hundred percent damage here and it's not working so not expanding then we're not going to get any workings of this engine it's not going to work at all but if this slight damage some semi damage then instead of this diaphragm being drawn upwards then it will only be sort of drawn up partially and that's because if it's slightly torn or ripped or something like that or it's gone stiff over time because the, the expandability of these diaphragms can also falter over time then that partial movement will mean that fuel 
can't get past the needle valve there efficiently for the engine use because the needle valve won't come back enough to do so. And so the result there then is that we'll have too little amount of fuel again going into the inlet there and of course that will cause bog down. And so again as soon as we hear that bog down sound we'll reach down and turn on the choke and we know what happens now. We've got the increase in vacuum in the inlet here and that increase in vacuum helps to pull out more fuel and as more fuel's been pulled out now we've got more fuel leaving the metering area so that helps to pull that diaphragm up a little more and that helps of course to pull that needle valve back and to allow some more fuel in and that of course helps a little more fuel to get into the inlet there but as I've said as with all of these cases I'd just like to end with this as with all of these cases when I say it using the choke gets the engine running again in these cases and not saying that it's running perfectly it will be running as I've always said lumpy and it won't be running desirable at all it'll be weak but what I'm saying here and the reason for this video is that there are some reasons why we need to apply the choke are caused by these sorts of problems and at that I want to thank you so much for watching this video I hope you've got all the information you needed again I use these videos and make them more for general education rather than sort of how to as you could imagine and that's why they're quite lengthy because I like to go through each process and show the understanding there so I can put my understanding of it across to you as I've said these videos are all about the reasons that we'd apply the choke other than for normal engine starting thank you for watching and I'll be back soon